Hello everyone, and welcome to part two of the Rogue Hunting Guide. I wanted to give you guys an update on the new things I've learned, things BSG has changed to the rogues, new things added and removed from my previous route, and then just a general better guide as a whole. But there's timestamps down below in case you want to skip to our particular point. Without wasting any more time, here's all the info you need to know for rogue hunting. Enjoy. Okay, I wanted to start by going over and covering the new and updated map. With this guy, we have the known loot locations on the map, as well as new spawn points, the southern spawn points added in along the route, just in case you want to make the run for it, and then extracts added in as well. Basically, from any one of these spawn points, you'll follow along the route, and end up at the starting location or somewhere along it. When you get these southern spawn points, it's important to loot along the route and pick up stuff within the villas or villages and making your way to the starting point pretty quickly, but don't be afraid to snag some of the loot along the way to supplement the overall round. Whenever you get either one of these east side spawns, you'll follow along the route avoiding the red areas those are landmines and just kind of circle around the edge of the mountain staying outside of the grassy spots and you'll be able to avoid the landmines pretty easily once you get to the starting location or um, a little bit further up above you just follow along the outside of the wall so you get to the piping you'll take the headshot on top of the roof and then you'll keep moving on the pathing Stop right here, scan inside, go in, and then plant yourself right here. Each one of these circle spots are stop points. The dotted lines are scans and kill shots. And then the black pathing is just how you move, where you go. But each one of these circles, you'll stop, scan, shoot. If they're there, if not, move to the next circle. It's important to note that there are two USEC rogue spawns on top of the eastern building three on top of the northern building, three on top of the western building, four on the ground by the northern building or inside it, four on the ground by the helicopter pad, and then two on the turrets down south. There's 18 total, 10 of which are lootable. The four on the ground, the four in the middle, and the two on the southern turret. You really only need to get the loot from these four on the north side and that plus the two loot, the loot from the two warehouses, you'll be good to go. The most important rogues to kill whenever you make it to the camp are the one off the top of this building when you first enter, the one on the corner of the northern building, and the one on the corner of the western building. If you take those guys out, you should be able to kill the four northern rogues on the ground loot them and make it to extract without being bothered you potentially will have to kill these two to make it to the northern checkpoint but most of the time i take road to military base and if road to military base isn't up and northern checkpoint isn't up then i'll follow along the path hit these stashes and wait make my way to path the shoreline all right now let's cover probably the most important part of the guide which is the northern spawn point for the rogues on the ground. There's three main ones, the first being on the south side of the street, the second being on the west side of the building, and the third being inside the building. If they spawn on the south side, you'll want to kill the first rogue, and then the other ones will push up into the parking lot here. Sometimes there's only one to two that will spawn on the south side, and the other two will spawn on the north side of the building, but either way, they will push and hold this position here. Typically, there is going to be one to two back by the trash can, and then one or two up front by the truck. These south side rogues can be picked from the doorway of the east side building. After you've checked for the south side spawn, you'll want to maneuver out of the building and park yourself on the truck and scan for the next spawn which is right inside this doorway on the ground level if they are here then just shoot them from behind the truck and they'll eventually move out into the parking lot 
or further back into the warehouse, in which case you'll have a direct line of shot on them as they're walking in a straight line. If they are not on this front side at the entrance, then you maneuver behind the van over here and peek up top for the railing spawn. When they spawn inside, they will either spawn on the ground level at the entrance here or up top on the railings or inside in the middle. They will get to the middle later. You worry about these guys off the start, the ones at the front entrance. And so work from this building to behind the truck, scan at the entrance. If they're not there, move to behind the ambulance and scan up top to the top railing. If they're not there, then you're going to want to look behind the building and look down west. This will be their next spawn, which is the west side parking lot. Typically, they will be along the edge of the building here with one on the south side corner and two inside the building. You work your way down the pathing on the back side of the wall. Look to pick off the rogue on the corner of the roof here and then scan down the building. That rogue will move to behind the trucks after you've killed one or, one or two of them. They'll all move there. And then from there, you'll play the barrel or the backside of the truck. After that, you can work your way down, run alongside the garage door that is here, and park yourself next to the doorway to do a right-handed peek inside. If you don't see them, then put a nade inside of the square tub area and the rogues will move out into the middle pathing through the building move out in the middle pathing and come your way or work towards the parking lot in which case they'll be walking in a straight line and you just bop them as they go after you throw a nade in this area if they are not there then you work back around the building to right here peek inside to look up top and if they aren't there, then work your way right here and play the wall and chuck a nade inside. You could do it for me either right here or right here, but use a nade to force them out. Let's talk starting gear for the rogue hunting route. First and foremost, I would highly recommend having a scope of some sort. Very, very, very important. You're wanting to take out the rogues efficiently and in one shot, you're not wanting to waste a lot of time and let them reposition and um, give others a chance to run up on you as you're trying to take out the rogues. And so scope allows you to take them out with almost one shot each time and you don't have to worry about missing or having to pull the trigger too many times. The next most important thing is our grenades. Um, grenades will be able to force rogues outside of their starting position and into their secondary. And usually they're secondary, you have a lot easier of a chance of killing them. For example, whenever they spawn inside the building, grenades are massively helpful. Extra mag, in case shit hits the fan and you need to reload. Extra ammo, in case shit hits the fan really hard and you need to repack your mags. Morphine, to stop painkillers. Mule, in case you get overweight and have to go kind of far for an extract. The ETG and the Zag Zagustin are not necessities. But they can be helpful in a pinch. The ETG will heal you up really quickly, and the Zagustin will stop heavy bleeds and light bleeds. I like the VPO a lot for a starting weapon. The SKS gets blocked on the doorway a lot more, and you can't shoot through the crack in the door. And so I have started to lean away from using the SKS in this route strictly because again you're trying to be efficient and headshot the raider or rogues immediately and with sks you're shooting the door in the crack more than you are hitting the rogue's head and so i think the vpo is a better option it's cheaper um it is a bolt to action but you're going to get those accurate headshots headshots off and you're only going to use this for the first couple rounds and then you're going to be looking to upgrade your weapon into um, one of the weapons that either the rogues will drop or ones that you feel comfortable buying off the flea market and using. Um, but either way, the VPO is really just for a starting snowball method to launch yourself into a better weapon 
and likely some better body armor, headwear, earpiece, face cover, and some tactical rig and backpack. On the first run, you can just rock the VPO. Then after that, when you rock a better gun, I would try to rock one of the armors you get off the rogues and rigs and backpacks. Try to always use rogue gear, insure it, and then once you kill the rogues again, ditch your gear and pick up the rogues gear that's not insured, bring that out and rinse and repeat. And then after a day or two of doing that, your insurance return is going to be looking relatively thick and you'll be able to stack up a great, great, great amount of loot um, and profits as a whole. Next on the list is money. You do not want to forget money for the car. Um, sometimes the Northern checkpoint's not up and if the car's there and you don't have money for it, then you're going to be booking it all the way to shoreline or path to shoreline. And that's not as fun as just being able to sit there and pay someone to drive you around. So bring at least 5,000 rubles, unless you have positive scav karma, then it might be a little less or negative scav karma, then it might be a little more, but 5,000 is the starting amount for the car on lighthouse. Make sure you bring in something to heal up a fracture something to stop a light bleed as well as uh, repair your HP and then stop something to stop a heavy bleed and that is pretty much all you need you don't have to worry about earpiece headwear armor or any of the extras when you're first bringing the VPO because again you're looking to snowball and you're running that first few runs as cheap as possible to make as much profit as possible when you actually do score a good kit you don't want to have to bring in an earpiece and headwear and armor when you're rocking a VPO because you're literally just going to upgrade all of that off the rogues every single raid. Okay, so here we are on the southeast side of the USEC rogue camp. This is the good starting point. It's where you're not going to get bopped from any of the rogues on the outside. You'll hear if anyone's up top, hopefully. But you'll come up to this point, kind of regain some stamina. Watch from above because that is a common... I wouldn't say common, but um, if someone is going to be camping it, that's not an uncommon spot. Let's put it that way. But push up this way. As you're making this run, look up to the right. You're wanting to scan up on that rock right there. That's another common spot that people will like to sit, as well as the one right there. Basically, sprint to this spot right here. Start, have cover from the rogue on top of this roof. So either spawn right there or a little bit off to the left right there. And basically, it's a free shot. Bop him. He's really slow to spot the south side push. After that, make sure you have enough stamina. You don't want to get, walk past these doorways. Otherwise, you'll alert the other rogues. Keep pushing. There is another spawn on top of the roof. It's further back in the middle. Not one you have to worry about. You only have to kill the first one. You're going to come up here. Stop right here. Regain a little bit more stamina. Scan inside. There'll be just a random uh, scav spawn inside. Just regular AI. Not any rogues that I've came across in, li uh, in live raids. But offline raids, there will be um, rogues in this building every time. It's different in offline compared to online. When you get to this door, I want to explain, explain how to peek it. So you're going to do a slow lean. Basically, um, the standard for that is, I believe, Alt A and D or Alt uh, Q and E. One of the two. I re-key bound it to uh, Control Q and E. But basically, it's a slow lean as as compared to a quick lean. A quick lean will put you all the way to the edge of your lean. The slow lean, you have control. You can just go over a tiny bit, over all the way, um, as much as you want. Basically, you come up to this edge, crouch, zoom in, and you're going to slow lean into the corner. Not far enough. We're going to step over a little bit more. Slow lean into the corner. And there we go. We'll have the shot on the rogue. But if you're too far over, let's say you try and line it up just through the regular doorway like this, you're going to get bopped every time. That rogue's going to spot you and going to start mowing you down. A right-handed peek versus uh, the AI, you're barely around the corner. Left-handed peek, your body's fully exposed. And so the AI will pick you up so much quicker on a left-handed peek as opposed to a right-handed peek. But if you go over too far and try to slow lean even, like see how we can go way past it. If you go over too far, then you end up getting bopped by that rogue. But if you're over here and lean in and you have them just on the edge of your screen on the right, 
he'll get a headshot every time and he won't be alerted but you need to kill him and then peek out into the parking lot um if the rogues end up spotting anyone they'll end up moving into that spot right there also behind the truck behind this truck right there and inside this connex right there so again peek outside look there look there nothing we're going to scan the front of the building it'll be like right there right there you'll take your shot and then you sit there and wait hold out just a few seconds you'll end up seeing them walk under that and you can bop them as they come if they end up making it too far just back up inside and hold for like 10 seconds and just wait here it's a good time you can reload you can repack your mags um you can even pick up some loot from over here or up top there the back left there's the box that has good loot but basically then you're going to peek out and they're going to be in their positions here and here maybe behind this truck and in the connex so basically pop them and then once you kill them all you can move out and loot them if they, you've killed three of them and one ends up roaming away typically they roam to right there that's going to be where they roam to um or inside this connex that's where you're going to want to scan next basically scan inside you can look behind the truck you can even look underneath see if you see any feet look We get to move over to the van. You look up here. You look inside the windows. You'll see them there. If they're there, you could just throw a nade inside the building and then sit here and wait and pop them as they come out. Just shoot them as they step out. If they don't end up coming out, then they likely push to the far side of the building. So basically you could sit here wait you know 20 seconds 30 seconds see if they end up pushing you from your nade if they don't then you can move on to the next part which is scanning the back side of the building as well as back by the truck they um that's a secondary spot back there that they will move to so that's gonna be the next spot you want to scan if you don't see them there then you can back it up here run along the wall it'd be another good time to make sure you're topped off on ammo um reload your mag what have you you're listening for in this position as well to see if you hear any um potential movement up top on the rogues as well as inside you'll be able to pick up sound cues that will tell you like where they spawn but you're going to want to take out this rogue on the corner of that roof and then work and peek right here it's a difficult spawn because when you peek right here and you kill them, they start taking off and running along the edge here. And you try to shoot them as they run and keep backing up, keep backing up and shooting them as they run. If they make it to right there, you have two options. One, either prone along this barrel, and you have to have it perfectly angled. Like you, um, you need to be a little further over to the right than you might think. Um, but this is pretty much it right here. Whenever... I proned and I'm like this, they'll end up spotting your left side for the same reason on that left-handed peak or right-handed peak earlier, they see a lot of my left body here. So if I'm over on this edge right here and I do a slow lean, they don't see me, they won't register that I'm here and I'm able to bop them um, head height as they come. Whenever they do go to push you, it'll just be aim right here and shoot them and then unlean and then you can slow lean back in to headshot them again. Um, but basically playing this backside of the barrel, try to get the right side of your body along this uh, bridge on the side. And you should be good. But basically, you want to be far back enough to where any other rogues that might come out won't spot the left side of you um, through that little vision there. And the rogues in front of you won't spot you. It's a difficult position to play, but it's kind of a last case scenario in case you don't bop them as they go. Um, usually using the VPO, you might you might have to play this barrel. There's another option. If you're able to pick off a few of the rogues as they're walking, and there's just one that might make it, you can push up. Do not try to run through this barrel. I've done that quite a few times. You can't run through. You'll get stuck. 
make sure you circle around the barrel and play this backside of this right here. And you can literally just right hand peek him around the corner. You'll spot his body right there and you'll be able to headshot him as you go around the corner. Now let's say that you peek up here, kill this guy, and they're not right there. It means they're going to be inside. You're going to push up. Make sure you run past this doorway and play this. Because they'll spot you through these cracks. And when they spawn inside, they'll be like right there. And on the other side of that tarp. And they'll see through that tarp too and, and try to shoot. So basically, whenever you run past this and they spot you, if you play this and lean down and aim, back up a little bit so you don't get barrel stuffed as much. But this position right here is really strong. They'll end up pushing from back out of that spot and further back from the left. And they walk in a straight line straight to you. And so you can just headshot them, reload, headshot them, reload, headshot them, reload. When you need to go out, you can just cl quick close that door. Do, do it quickly. Don't step out too long. And you can back up to this position and then bop them. And then you're back to step. I don't know what 10 12 but basically playing this barrel this truck and that doorway is not bad if you end up staying out here too long there is a chance that the rogue that plays that gets shot pushed off the turret and if he gets pushed off the turret he'll circle back around to right about there or right there and he'll peek this way and start shooting you same with the other rogue on the corner basically they'll play the southern turrets until they get tagged and then after that, they'll start pushing to a position that might spot you. But something to keep in mind, um, it is a decently long shot and they're not on the turrets. And so it's not as deadly, but it still has the definite, definite potential to kill you. But basically, let's say that they didn't spot you through the windows at all. And they don't push you from inside either. Just pop a nade inside throw a nade and that should get them to push out and come your way um and so you can just shoot them as they push out from getting naded nades are really really good ways to get them out of their position and into their secondary and um just make sure you're doing a right-handed peek into their their push positions and you should be good um if you're not able to get them to push from this and they don't push here even after your nade, that likely means that they're on the far side of the building, either up top or down low, and they, they pushed back as you circled around the back side of the building. If that's the case, just circle back this way and play the outside wall. So basically, you can come right back over here, follow along the wall. Make sure you have plenty of stamina. You do not want to get caught out with any stamina here. You can play this right here and then kind of peek around the corner. You'll spot one out, hopefully right here or even off to the left there. If you don't see them there or up top, then you can circle all the way back and play this position right here. And you just sit here, wait. You can shoot them and um, pop a nade in there if you need them to come out to you. But basically, you're trying to take them from right-handed peaks and forcing them into secondary positions so you can drop them easily and calculate it. Um, yeah, that's pretty much the route. And then after that, loot and scoop. Let's go over some loot spawns. Inside the east building here, at the top of the staircase, you have a rare item spawn inside the box. All along the metal, you have barter items box there more barter items on the ground i haven't found anything inside those offices yet i feel as if maybe on the table or in the bookshelf but nothing yet barter items along the ground full box more barter items asa Barter items. Food and water. Barter items. Barter items. Rare spawn on the table. Food on the ground. Grenade on the table. 
harder items along the railing on the metal rare spawns on the bookshelf harder items on the metal more barter items back here lots of the new barter items X spawn inside the box On the back side, on the other side of the spire, you get food items and barter items. Again, lots of new barter items spawns back here. Ammo and food back by the boxes and on top of that one. You have a military tank battery spawn as well as barter items right there. That pretty much does it for the north building. So we're going to go on over to the west building now. Hide out upgrade items in the box. Close the boxes to my left. Ammo on the other side of the sandbags here. More barter items along the railing and inside on the shelf. Rare items in that shelving as well. Barter items along the top metal and right there as well. There's a rare item spawn in the office back behind me that I miss. Barter items all along the ground here as well as up top on the box inside the box all along this back side on the ground barter items and on top of those boxes and you have a toolbox right there and some ammo inside the boxes and that pretty much does it all right so we're now back at the south villa i'm going to show you guys a quick run through on some good spawns on top of this body, you can get two rare items. They are pretty common. Inside here, you can get meds. Food and water. Graphics card. Holder of Intel. Hideout upgrade items. Rare spawn. Duffel bag, vertex on the table, moonshine, duffel bag, aces spawn. The dead body can also spawn aces down low. And inside the garage here, rare item spawn. Rare item spawn, hideout upgrade item, barter, barter, military tank battery, and barter items. And then you're off to USEC camp. All right, last but not least, let's show you how to extract. So when you're leaving the northern building, you're going to go out and push to these connexes. You're going to turn around and scan for the rogues on top of the roof. I'm going to take out the two remaining ones on the north side and then just circle around and head to northern checkpoint if you have that as an extract. You can actually cut straight through here as well. A little risky because if you don't take the right pathing, you might hit a mine, but it should be good. If you don't have Northern Extract or you want to take the car instead, just follow this exact pathing. You'll make it to this block and scan for the car. If the car is not up, then you'll work all the way along the backside of the mountain. If the stash is on the way and then work your way to path the shoreline.
All right, well, that brings us to the end of part two of the rogue hunting guide. Thank you all for bearing with me through this extremely long video. I just wanted to make sure I got all the relevant information out that I could possibly think of. Um, but I will be live every day except Mondays starting at 8 p.m. Eastern on Twitch. So if you want to catch me live or ask questions there, feel free to stop by. If you have any comments or questions or tips and tricks, throw them down below as well. And then if you enjoyed the video, make sure you like and subscribe so you get notifications for my future content. Um, I think the next one's probably going to be an interchange or a customs money-making guide. But anyways, until next time, guys, peace out.